Hello, my name is KG Anderson, and I am here to provide a quick mini review of the Fogeal Classical Silent Electric Travel Guitar. It comes in a very simple gig bag, nothing too fancy about it. Uh, it's got a couple straps and handles, one strap, two handles. Um, contains no um, documentation at all, so I bought mine from Amazon. It retailed at the time for $240. I believe it's gone down about $20 since. Uh, but there are pictures online showing you what the buttons are for, uh, so I have just saved copies of those because that just makes the most sense. Now, it's quite simple when it comes out. You can see it's, this is it folded up. It's basically, just to show you in profile, it's a plank of wood, the full length. Uh, you can see that's the lighter wood there, and another sort of piece underneath. Um, so it's no separate neck or anything like that. It's just, it's just one long piece of wood there. Um, it's got these little arms. Uh, it's, got, it's moved the headstock from the top to the bottom, saving, I'd say it's about six, eight inches. Um, and uh, on the length, it is a full length classical guitar. It is 650 uh, millimeters from the nut to the saddle. It's a full 40, uh, sorry, 52 millimeters wide at the, at the, at the nut, uh, and the string spacing I think is about 40, 44, 45. Um, same dimensions as just a standard classical guitar. Um, it looks odd folded up because it, these little arms, it has a sort of locking mechanism. I won't, actually, before, sorry, before, I, uh, before I unfold the arms, it's easier to see the side. Um, you can see it has here, uh, well, the, the tuner's down here, and it's got a, a, an on-off button uh, for the electronics. It has a piezo pickup right here under the saddle, um, and two output jacks, one for headphones, one for aux, and then four knobs. They're unlabeled, as I said, but one is volume, and uh, then there's uh, tone and reverb and delay. Uh, so that's all on one side. This, is, this will be the top side of the guitar when you unfold it. And the bottom side has simply here a like uh, regular quarter inch, I think, um, standard uh, jack for a, an amp, right? So these arms are folded uh, in the locking kind of mechanism here. You just, uh, and the arms are quite simple. This is one of the cost cutting things. If you were to buy Yamaha, Silent Classical, you know, they have, it's a much fancier, better made wooden uh, strip of wood and such. This, these are, if you see up closer, it's basically just a length of thick wire or, or metal uh, with a sort of you know, rubber hose around it, essentially. Um, this will not work with uh, the, the standard support systems that I use, right? I, I prefer a, I've got a, a guitar lift and I've also got a number of mechanisms that can uh, suction cup onto the bottom of the guitar. It doesn't work with any of these. Uh, those don't work rather with this design. Um, so it does come with button straps at the uh, uh, sort of top and bottom. So I, or I should say strap of buttons at the top and bottom. So I personally, I'm not a strap user for the guitar, but um, with this, it works reasonably well. You can put it on, you can adjust it, of course, uh, the angle you want. So it's, it's a headless guitar, reminiscent of those, you know, back in the 80s when these, those were popular among electric guitars. Um, you can adjust it to the angle you like to keep it. The body here as such, let me tilt this down just a smidgen. The body, one key difference here, it's not shaped quite like a proper classical guitar. Um, and of course it has sort of cutaways both, both sides, top and bottom, which is a little bit weird, especially because the 12th fret is right here. You know, so if you're classical guitarist, you're typically used to the body joining the neck at the 12th fret. Maybe there's a cutaway, but here, this here, you know, we're talking so 12th, 15th, 17th. This is the 17th fret right here. You know, so so that is the one one of the key differences that I find just uh, getting used to this is uh, is that because your visual guide, you know, where the where the body normally the body is going to meet the meet the neck right about here. That's not there. It does have fret markers on the side. I think you can see them there. Yeah, it's got your standard, you know, three, five, seven, nine, and twelve, and uh, 15, 17, 19. Uh, so it's a, it does have 20 frets for those of you who like to <laughs> play all the way up there. Um, I should actually preface this. I should have prefaced this. It's too late for a preface. Why I bought this. I bought this personally not because I wanted a really awesome sounding classical guitar that happens to be electric. Right? Uh, that, there's a market for that. That's not why I got this. I simply wanted a travel guitar, something that was fairly robust and small. I could have a carry-on on an airplane or I could shove into the car. Uh, on a family road trip when the car is usually packed and there's no room for a proper guitar. So this folds up, you know, fits very nicely in this little, as I showed you, this, this little gig bag. 
You can easily put this in the overhead bin and so forth on an airplane. Um, so that's my goal. Um, so, of course, this, this, this achieves that by being essentially, like I said, a solid plank of wood. There's no headstock, so they reduce the dimensions a bit. Um, there's no thin top, um, which is very fragile, you know, only a couple millimeters thick. So that's great. Um, the sound is a big compromise thing, because, of course, it doesn't sound anything like a, like a classical guitar, really, uh, which is, of course, also as a, as a quote unquote silent guitar, that is, that's also what they're going for. So if I play it, the mic is right there. Uh, uh, I should show you. It's just a simple, simple mic here. A um, uh, little, little over two feet away, and you can probably hear us a little bit. But it's, it's generally, it's just, it's quite quiet. So if I sit here and play, you know, you can probably, it might probably pick some of that up, but it's probably not picking it up very well. It might be picking up the air conditioner that just kicked in um, behind me about a minute ago. I don't know if that's if that's bothering things or not, but. Um, which is great, because if I'm traveling again, if I'm in a hotel, I can play this. I'm not going to disturb the neighbors. I could also play this late at night at my house or even in my office, again, without disturbing the neighbors or anyone who's around me trying to sleep or rest or work or whatever. So that's nice. Now, it does have electronics. It has, like I said, a piezo pickup. So I'm going to um, plug it in. Um, I did not buy this with the intention of amplifying it at all. I actually have just bought an amp. I play gigs at nursing homes. I did one last week. It was their lunchtime. And it was so loud, I was in one corner, pretty much couldn't be heard. And so I thought, ah, I got this thing. I'm, I'm going to buy a little amp. And, and what I've got here is a little small 10 watt amp. It's quite small, petite, uh, almost ripped it over the wall here. Um, so we turn that on, turn this on. And I'm not changing anything, I'm not moving the mic. Uh, I sh should be able to hear it. Right? It's, I've got the setting, I think the volume's like at two. I mean, I, uh, I'll, I'll crank it up in a second, just as you just like when, it's, when, it's, when I really crank it up. But, uh, and I'm also keeping delay and echo are, are at zero, right? You're never going to use those as a classical guitarist. And volume is also just about at the bottom. So let me just show you. Yeah. If I were to crank up the volume here, oh, I don't know what the, that's definitely louder. Now if I crank this back down here, crank it up on the amp, um, and again, yeah. That's, I'm just stop there. I don't want to, want to blow anybody's uh, speakers or, or hurt their ears if you're listening to this with headphones on. But you can see, I, I think this gets quite a good bit of noise. It's quite loud. Um, these piezo amps, uh, mics rather, I think they do pick up the string squeak quite a bit as you slide over the string. Um, so that, that's a potential drawback. Like I said, I, I, I didn't buy this for recording with. Really, I didn't buy it with gigs in mind. I might use it next time I have one of these. Uh, uh, some of the retirement home gigs are quite, you're in a room, off in a room, and sometimes you're in an open space and you're competing against the bingo game down the hall. I've literally done that, and then, or competing against lunchtime and plates. And, and, and silver and all that. So I'm, I, I will probably use this, uh, much to my surprise, for amplifying. Overall, uh, basically, uh, this is about a third of the price of the Yamaha silent classical guitar. I'm sure the Yamaha is a much better build, um, but I didn't want to pay that kind of money. Um, so for my purposes, like I said, I want something that's classical guitar dimensions uh, that will travel well. It's reasonably robust. There is a um, truss rod under here. Uh, I don't know why, frankly, um, because normally truss rod is, you know, it, it lets you adjust the, uh, the relief because the neck is, a, it, in most guitars, is a separate piece of wood that's bolted onto the body. That is not the case here. You know, it's, it's a single piece of wood on the top. So I'm not entirely sure what the truss rod uh, will adjust if, if you, uh, I did open it and gave it a slight turn. It was very difficult to turn. I think it's because there's not much, I, I, I don't know what it's for, frankly. Um, but overall, if you want a travel guitar, that has the dimensions of a classical guitar. You're not concerned about it sounding as good as a classical guitar because I'm always going to reach for my proper standalone, you know, cedar and spruce top classical guitars uh, when I want to actually play and enjoy it. Uh, this is more for, again, for traveling. I can travel and still play guitar, still keep up my practice, um, keep my fingers active without um, 
bothering anybody without taking up a bunch of room. So I, I, I can play more more tunes than just Lagrima, by the way. Um, I just that's that's just what I'm sticking with for, for this. So if you have any questions, drop them below in the comments, and I'll I'll get to them. Otherwise, I do recommend this uh, for the price. I think I think it achieves the goals that I want. Um, there are finer guitars out there, and you can spend a lot more money if, if you like, certainly. But I think I think for my purposes, this uh, this will do it. Thanks.